Okay, so what? how do you pronounce this? Um, Christian Huygens, I believe. Is that it? Is it Huygens. simpler than my brain went? It was like Christian, Christian. Huygens. Just hold that A. Hold it, hold it for as long as Christian you Huygens. <laughs> Look at an announcer. Let's get ready. It's to time. All right, so you guys want to uh, talk about uh, what the fuck is light? What is light? I don't know. You tell me. It's not dark. You're right. So like, it's crazy though. Like you turn, you like we come in here, we flip a switch, and then that thing lights up the room, right? Yeah. But like, what is it? What what is actually making it um, bright in here? I what thought it was a small sun in a glass ball that we had. Hmm. No. There's no suns in there. Wait. What is this? That would be a tablet. Oh, what, did you, what did you draw? Nothing. I guess cats. It was oh, cat right. last time. time. You drew all this stuff? <laughs> oh, that's cool. Yeah, I don't have hands. You know that you're saying we're starting over? Put it here. Um, so, yeah. So, light. What is that? What do you... So, like... For a lot, like, it, it's something that makes so much sense, right? It's something that we know. We know what light is. Mm -hmm. Turn on the switch, you want to right up the room, you need to do some shit. But, like, but what is it? What is actually making it so you're able to see? Mm -hmm. What is, is something coming out of your eyes into the thing? Is something coming off the thing into your eyes? That one. What is, uh, what do, what do you think? That second one. Remember, remember we were saying, um, if you can't explain it to a five-year-old, you don't really know what it is? So how would you explain light to a five-year-old? <laughs> mm. You know? Um, Shit's bright, son. Yeah, is it? Son. Yeah. Or, or daughter. I'd be or like, daughter. it's energy. And then the five-year-old would again. look at me like... And what's energy? What's energy? That's a whole... That's, that's a, I want to do a whole thing about it. <laughs> we'll do that later. Um, all right, so like... I mean, I think a good way to handle that question, like, what it, like, that's a really broad question, like, what is it? I, in order to, like, really um, figure out what it is, we have, figure, we have to talk about what it does first, right? Because we kind of figure out what it does, and then we could talk about what thing could make it do those things, mm -hmm. right? So what does light do? Don't, what does light do? Light? What does it do? <coughs> All right. What does light do? Well, if, like... It, it can reflect off of things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like those mirrors. Off of mirrors and right. stuff. Mm -hmm. It can go through prisms and do weird stuff. Yeah. Um, hey, what's a prism? The, we can talk about that. Let's talk about like, mirrors first, though. Because that was the first thing you said. Mirrors. Um, mirrors are weird. Did you, like, you know how like sometimes you see a picture of yourself and you're like... Who's that handsome really... guy? No, well... <laughs> Um, sometimes you see, well, maybe not always, but sometimes you see a picture of yourself and you're like, ah, I don't really like, I don't know, I look weird in that picture or whatever. It's, right. so like pictures are what everyone actually sees of you, right? <laughs> but the you that you know is the mirror you, which is actually flipped, um, vertically. You know what I mean? So like the, where your hair parts and everything is on the opposite side that you think it is. And that's why sometimes pictures freak you out because it's flipped. Wait. Is that weird? Yeah. Um, You're so, used to always seeing the mirror image of yourself instead right. of exactly. Yeah. You know the mirror image of you better than um, the real image of you. I think that's how. Um, so light reflects, right? Light bounces off things. Yes. Okay. Certainly. So what else bounces? Rubber. Okay. Rubber and rubber's like a thing, right? So maybe light can be made up of a bunch of little <laughs> things that are bouncing. Maybe. Like rubber. Um, that's a rubber. That's what. Um, so, all right. All right, so light reflects, right? Mm -hmm. And what was the other thing you said? Prisms? What do prisms yeah. do? Okay, so prisms are uh, probably the one that you think of when you think prism is the like those little... Fella. Yeah, like the dark side of the moon triangle yeah, yeah. where the light yeah. comes in. So, okay, light goes through that triangle and what happens to it? It becomes it refracts. Refracts. Good word. Yeah. It refracts. Yeah. It bends, right? Light bends. Did you ever um, have a straw in your glass? And uh, you look, and you're like, that's not what a straw is. It's like cut, it's and it's like, like, it's like centimeters away from it. Why is that? Why is it doing that? Why? Water. Because water. Because water is... What's going on in the water? A different density. Okay. 
Okay. And what does that do? Uh, what does it do to light? What does it do into that image of the straw? It's putting it in the wrong place. Putting it in the wrong place. Or is it in the right place? Is it refracting? It's refracting. Stop looking. No. You're cheating. You gave me the notes. <laughs> Idiot. You're cheating. Give it a cat. Cat no. needs the notes. <laughs> I'm... I'm good. <laughs> right. I'm good. Um, you know, on... I read somewhere when I was younger. I have no idea where, but it was some book that I read. Mm -hmm. um, and the main character was like spear fishing, okay, because he was trying to survive. Uh -huh. And in the book, he he had to aim like a couple inches lower than where he saw the fish. Right. Otherwise, he would end up missing every time. Right, because it's like where you see the fish is not really where it is physically. It's off a little bit, right? Early man's first understanding of refraction. Right, like hunting, right? Exactly. That's interesting. I wonder if that's like really... I mean, we had to figure that out when we were fishing. Well, yeah, or else we would have yeah. missed every time. We would have missed, right. Um, so light bends. Um, so we, have, we, need, we need to figure out something that bounces and bends, right? To figure out what light is. Oh, man. Bears figured that stuff out too, man. Bounces and bends? No, they, they had to grab fish out of the water. They figured out refraction too. Right, okay. Yeah, is so... Is the light bending or is it path bending? Uh, that's a good question. Well, so... Okay, so if light is a thing that's moving, right? Is the thing itself moving, or is like the stuff it's going through bending? That's another good way to think about it. Is the water bending it though? Is the water bending itself? Does that even make sense of a question? I ask? I want to say no. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, is it like turning? Like, if you're driving down a street and then you start swerving to the right, right. or something. Okay, well, kind of like a house, but so if it's, you're it's... driving down a field. Right. So it's important. Um, how to even talk about what it's doing then, right? So not only do you figure out what it's doing, but how like what how to talk about what it's doing because that'll help us pin it down too, right? All right. Um, so I think that's a good place to start, though. It bounces, it bends, um, and that's really all like that we experience for like every day, right? It does some other things, but we'll get there. Um, so let's talk about how people thought about light. For a while like how it went through history right okay so um always going to the greeks dude always got to start with the greeks i love the greeks they did a lot of thinking um you know what's weird like i feel like all the science history that i read it always like is greeks is like the most um oldest it goes but like there were people around long before the greeks and there had to be a lot of science well i guess they were the first people to like there wasn't a lot of like Wise written records and stuff yeah about that sort of especially thing. writing that survived tribal yeah, warfare right. you yeah. know what's interesting like uh that library in um alexandria the, about alexandria? yeah that one that, that got burned down right we would probably think of history and how like how we learn things um it's totally different if that library didn't burn down right mm -hmm. absolutely yeah the world would be there. a different place. that's crazy at least a lot earlier um, all right, so let's go to the Greeks, right? The Greeks are figuring out, t trying to figure out what light is. Mm -hmm. And they found it was um, the best way to describe it for what they experienced with the bouncing and the bending mm -hmm. was that light is just straight lines of something. They're called rays, right? And those rays, they moved. But there was an argument about how those rays worked. Uh, there were some Greeks, I forgot who, I think it was, Pyth uh, it was actually... I think, remember, you know the Pythagorean theorem? Mm -hmm. Pythagoras thought that something, like, came out of your eye to bounce and come back. Like, that's how your vision worked. That's how we see things, right? Um, but uh, other Greeks thought that, like, it's bouncing off the thing and then coming to our eyes. Like, we're not shooting anything out, right? Um, so, like, there were argument about how it happened. But when you have that straight line thing, like, those straight lines could geometrically bend, Right? Like, the angle comes in as angle goes out at, which describes light pretty well. Like, if you're looking at a mirror, right, um, and you don't have, like, anything to measure an angle, but you kind of have an idea of how it bounces, right? Like, if, if Greg was a mirror, and he's between, like, me and James, like, off to the side, if I would look at Greg, I would see James, because of how the angle of the light goes, right? Doing a lot of hand-waving on a sound thing. You'll but draw it, don't it's worry. Um, so, like, so that, that angle that bounces with the rays, it would bounce off and go to you. Um, and, like... Going from one, like, so light's moving through air, right? And then it goes to water, like a whole different medium. Mm -hmm. Like, when it has that um, fucking interference or whatever, uh, that, like, that interface is what I'm looking for, interface, right? It'll bend through, uh, and it actually, it'll move slower, so it'll bend through the material and move a little bit slower. That's why the path bends, right? Mm -hmm. um, all right, totally side thing for a second, but, like, 
so we, we say the speed of light's a constant. We talk about that uh, whenever, whenever we talk about that. Right? Yeah, speed yeah. of light's a constant. Episode that? one. Yeah, right. Um, so we talked about that. And then, but like, that's if it's moving through a vacuum. That's like the fastest light could go. But when light's moving through shit like air or water or something like that, it actually slows down. It's not going as fast. And we've gotten light to slow down. I just read this this week. We got in light in 1999. We got light to slow down to 38 miles an hour. Jesus. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> That's fucking slow. Dude, I drove faster than that on the way here. Yeah, I know you do. You probably drove faster than that. I'm... Never mind. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but like, so it slows down to... <laughs> Never mind. Um, fucking... Uh, what was it saying? Light slow down. Okay. Right. So light slow down. We can slow down. Um, so it described light pretty well. So uh, the Greeks thought that stuff. And actually, Arab scholars I was reading, um, they like perfected that whole theory a little bit more. And they came up with geometric optics, mm -hmm. right? Um, and they would use diagrams to figure out how light bends. And they figured out, um, they figured out something called a pinhole camera. Did you ever hear a pinhole camera? Like ten seconds ago. Ten seconds. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, the way a pinhole like this is crazy. So, but you gotta put yourself in Arab times. Okay, you there? I do. You gotta put yourself okay. there. Okay. All right. All right. Just, just for a second. Just gotta like okay. old ancient. You know what I mean? It's yeah. hot. Yeah, it's hot. There. I think. <laughs> Whatever. I don't live there. So you are you there? You there? Outside. You don't oh, know. God. You like you don't <laughs> know as much shit as we do now, right? Like you. Yeah. Right. So. Imagine this, like some guy was like, yo, check this out, I gotta show you something. And there's this box, right? It's a dark, like, box room. And you go in there, right? And they shut the door. So you're sitting in this dark box or whatever. And you look at the wall of the box, and it looks projected on the wall. It looks like outside, but upside down. Everything that you would see outside is, it's faint. Reverse. It's projected on the thing, so but it's upside down. Yeah, yeah, right. Those that's you probably made one in elementary school. They're mad easy to make. Um, that's a pinhole camera. So that might have to be like magic to them, right? They're sitting in this box and like the outside is on the wall and it's not really there. Yeah. So this is thing. magic, right? Like, right. So um, the reason that works is like the little hole on the side of the house, or the box or whatever the fuck it is. Um, the light goes through and it's you're cutting off. So, like, the, the way they figured this out was, like, with the rays, right, the straight lines, you're cutting off everything, and there's uh, what's called, like, a one-to-one -one correspondence with the light rays. So, like, the bottom of the tree, I'm doing a lot of hand things. At the bottom of the tree, <laughs> it goes up through the pinhole and then projects straight up on the, th on the th right, right? So that light ray is going to the top. So that's why the bottom of the tree is on the top, and the top of the tree is on the bottom. It's doing, like, an X thing, and it projects the image up on the wall, right? Hmm. It's like magic. You know that also happens in your eyes. Yes, right. So that's how lenses work. Le like, um, any like telescope lenses or eyeglasses, things like that. What you're actually doing is you're bending the light rays in a particular way in order to be able to see things differently, right? So like, when I look at you or whatever, the light rays are coming into the lens of my eye, bending, and actually your image is projected upside down in the back of my eye. Your brain image is projected, it. yeah, right. Your brain flips that shit around. Like, you, your brain sees it and makes it right side up. <laughs> this isn't right. This isn't right, so they, they just fix that. Um, but, like, uh, and, like, we, so we figure out, like, we could describe lenses really well with the way ray diagrams, like, with the Arabs, the geometric optics and everything. It's crazy. Um, and you could, it's, it's crazy to think about. You could magnify the image of something. You know what I mean? Like, you have a magnifying glass. And you put that shit somewhere, and it makes the thing you're looking at bigger. Like, doesn't that, isn't that crazy that that happens? Like, it's bigger than it really is. It's the next level in observance. Right. Um, okay, so the reason why that happens, it looks bigger, is you're actually not looking at a real image. It's a virtual image. All right? So I'm going to paint your picture. You follow me? I'm going to try to explain this as best as I can. So, um... The image of you, like, projected on my eye, it's, you could see that on a screen, right? Like, the back of my eye is like a screen. Yeah. Um, I could put a lens, and then I could put a screen, and if your image shows up on the screen, that's a real image. You with me? Like, the pinhole camera is like a real image. It's like a screen. Okay. A virtual image is an image that, it's like an optical illusion. It's your brain is making sense of how the light's coming to you, right? So, with the magnifying glass, what it does is the, the, <laughs> the light comes in, and it separates, right? 
And the fact that it separates, your brain thinks, okay, so it's separating like this angle and you kind of make sense of it and you're making up the image that it's like um, not really where it is. And that's why things get magnified. So it's a, it's a fake image. It's not real. Rainbows aren't real <laughs> we're gonna talk about that though <laughs> we're gonna put, put, put a pin in that so double second. rainbows are okay, i need you to simmer on that real. for a second they're not real um they're we're gonna talk okay so anyway all right so whatever geometric optics that's cool i'm gonna skip ahead a lot through history um out of arab times okay um coolest scientist of all time is it newton it's newton dude he's so good dude he, he dude I could spend fucking a week talking about Newton. Newton was the fucking man. He was kind of weird from what I read. Like, he's kind of, like, reclusive and uh, off as a person. But, like, the shit he did for humanity was out of control. Do you want to do a Newton history episode? Yes. 100%, dude. 100%. Um, Tune in. Tune in. Uh, Fucking, okay, so Newton, he was interested in light. He did a lot of work with light. Like, we know him for Newton's laws of motion and stuff. Ah. I got to talk about Newton all day. Um, I'm sorry, I'm getting excited. But like, so we know this is no laws of motion. Uh, but he did a lot of work with light and prisms. Um, he was the first to, like, one of the first people to do experiments with prisms. How when you shine light, so it's made up of a bunch of colors. Like all the colors make up light, mm-hmm. right? We're getting closer yeah. to like what it is, right? So we're, like we could talk, like we're talking about how it's rays and everything, and you could talk about how it bends and. Not only that, but like what it's made of, like white light is made up of all the colors oh, of the rainbow. Yeah. Like if you imagine rain, like Roy G. Biv, indigo's not in the rainbow. Anymore. It's Roy G. Biv. No. Right. Um, we'll talk about that too. But Biv. Um, so he would t- like white light would come in, he would separate it out, and then he put another prism and put that shit back together too. <laughs> Isn't that cool? <laughs> <laughs> um, so white light is all the colors. Like so, people like to think of white as like the absence of color. But it's actually all the colors mixed together, where black is really like the absence of color. You know what I mean? Um, you know what's really weird? Uh, construction paper. <laughs> oh, yeah? <laughs> Side note. So, um, uh, white construction paper, or no, black construction paper is what it is. Black construction paper is a mix of all the colored fibers. It's actually not black. If you put it under a microscope, it's all the different colored fibers of paper. It's like it's 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 beautiful under a microscope, dude. Yeah, I see. It's so good. Is that so, like additive? Uh, that's subtractive, actually, okay. because what the what the black is doing is we're gonna talk about this too, but it's absorbing all of the light essentially. It's mm-hmm. because it's absorbing like the red fibers are absorbing red, the green fibers are absorbing green, and it looks like ad, it looks black because it's absorbing all those colors. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Is that cool? Yeah. Awesome. Um, all right, so Newton with the prisms and everything, he thought that light was made up of uh, little bits. Little bits? Little bits, kind of like little so like little things. Like light, you could break it apart and there's like a little thing of light, right? He called them corpuscles. <laughs> That's the worst name ever. Right? Well, it's, they didn't stick. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they didn't, didn't stick. I found these corpuscles, please. <laughs> Keep them away from me. I don't want none of those. I don't want to see your corpuscles. Corpse. Is it corpuscles? Corpuscles? No, cor- I'm pretty sure it's corpuscles. Every time I heard it pronounced, I mean, I could always be wrong. That's a Language is weird. Corpuscles. Corpuscles. I'm ma- they're, I'm a- no, they're both. <laughs> I'm imagining like a bowl of corpuscles. Corpuscular. With some like milk and whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, anyway, so he, he thought there were th- like little balls of things. Which makes sense, right? You throw a ball on a wall and it bounces off the wall. At like an ang- like the same angle it came in at, right? Like yeah. you blow a ball against the wall, that's how it bounces. So like light does that, right? Um So like, you know what I mean? Like he like the way he explained it was like that. Um Okay, so light is made up of things, little bits of things. Little thing bits, mm-hmm. yeah. Little atoms? Uh Are like little about? light atoms kinda, right? Like an indivisible bit of light. Mm-hmm. Um Alright, so there was another dude around the same time. His name was Christian Huygens. Pretty sure that's how you pronounce his last name. I thought it was Christian. It's like, yeah, there's like two A's in his name <laughs> right next to each other. Um, I don't know what that's about. I've never seen that before. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so, is it Dutch or something? Is it Dutch to put two A's next to each other? From that general area. Yeah. It seems like, who decided to do that the first time? Put well, like two of the same letter right next to each other. Just two vowels well, we in general. It. I guess you're right. Like soon, there's like two O's yeah. next to each other. Oh, interesting. Bring it back, dude. Okay, you're right. So, um, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> fucking English real quick. Christian Huygens. <laughs> okay, he thought light was a wave. Okay. Yeah. 
So you're like, all right, that's fine, right? Yeah, Whatever. That's what we should. Um, so, but that's a duh. big deal. The difference between whether it's a stream of little light balls, right, or it's a wave, right? We have to. Do you know what? Like, all right. Side question. <laughs> side question. What's a wave? Um, if you had to explain a wave, <laughs> a wave <is> basically <laughs> every my wait, 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 wait. explanation of a wave. <laughs> what? <laughs> wait. Next, no. no, no. Listen. <laughs> you didn't know though. All right. Well. Um, <laughs> so. <laughs> I feel like every time we sit down and talk, it's like, let's show James that he doesn't know how to explain, like, what things, you know what I mean? Like so what's, what's for that a, not to happen. <laughs> Put you on the spot. I need I'm to sorry. write a letter to management. No, it's, I think it's, <laughs> um, well, what is it, well, like, if you had to explain a wave, how would you explain it? Uh, like, what is it? Like an ocean wave. Oh, yeah, like, like an ocean wave, right. So, like, when you have an ocean wave. It's like a pulse. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. So the steady particles stream. are moving back and forth, mm. and it is cyclical. Right, right. So, um, you have like so. Imagine you have like a bit of water, right? So you're in the ocean, right? And you're looking at one spot in the water. Like when a wave happens, that spot just moves up and down, right? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like that bit of water is all it's doing is moving up and down. But the wave, like that little pulse of energy, is moving forward. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like not that the like the water itself isn't moving forward. It's interacting in a way that it moves the wave forward, but the things are just going up and down. Like the wave in a stadium. Right, exactly. Like, right, that is, ah, oh, cat. Ah, oh, that was such a perfect example. Like when you stand up in the stadium, you're standing right where you are, right? Your hands go up in the air, you sit down, but the wave itself is moving, right? <laughs> no one's moving. No one's like, they're just, just going, going up, up and down and in a certain way that they could like move that pulse energy. around. Right. Yeah, kind of, yeah. Mm -hmm. No. Well, kinetic energy only up and down, but not like around in a circle. Right. Well, you know? that's the energy right. transferring from one particle to the next. Right. Yeah. Bumping yeah. into the next. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, but you need something to move. You know what I mean? You need that water to be able to go up and down, right? Okay. I want you to hold, like, remember that. We're going to come back to it. Okay. Um, so, waves are different from particles, right? Uh, there's a difference between a stream of particle and a wave going through. Yeah. But so, Christian Huygens thought it was a wave. Um, but so Newton couldn't explain some things about the whole particle aspect of it, right? He couldn't explain why light interferes with each other. And we're gonna, like, so interference is like, it'll, it interacts with each other and like cancels it out. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Or it can make it bigger, right? So like, that's kind of like a wave picture, right? When you have two waves that come together, like if you have like the tops of two waves, it makes it bigger. But if you have like the top and the bottom, it cancels it out. Uh, so we couldn't explain that, but Christian Huygens couldn't figure out what, what was waving. So like an ocean wave moves through the ocean, right? Um, but what is light moving through? What is light moving in order to make it wave and come towards you? The ether. Yes, the ether is such a, we're going to talk about the ether too. <laughs> the luminiferous ether. Oh, the name of the name. It's the name of the name of the thing. Hashtag luminate whatever you just said. Luminif luminiferous? Luminiferous. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, there it is. Okay. So this is like 1600s, right? They're yeah. figuring out what this shit is and they can't, they don't know. Some guy named Thomas Young came along. Okay? And guess what the name of it ex his, ex his, ex his experiment was? <laughs> I'm, I'm giving it to you. Um, the Young you, pretty much. It's Young's double sl slit experiment. Double slit. So they put the wor extra words in there to tell you what's going on. But So he did what's, like, a f it was a huge fucking experiment. Like, he learned so much about light doing this thing. So what he did, I'm going to tell you what he did. Um, he, uh, what did he do? He put up a screen, right? And he would cut slits in, in the screen, right? And he would shine light at the screen with the slits in it and look at the pattern on the wall behind it, right? So imagine you have the light source, the screen with two slits in it, and then the screen, like the like a, the wall behind it to shine the light on. If light was particles, if light was particles, the particles would just go right through the slit and hit the wall behind it, right? So you would just see like two spots on the wall maybe, right? Mm -hmm. Where the light went. Or two slits. Sorry. Yeah, two exactly, lines. right. Two lines. You would see two lines on the wall of shining the light through. That's not what... Tom, uh, Thomas Young saw. He didn't see that shit. What'd you know see? what he saw? Dude, it was crazy what he saw. What'd you see? Was so, it a rainbow? 
it wasn't a rainbow. <laughs> no. It wasn't a rainbow. But it was a pattern of alternating light and dark spots spread out across the wall, kind of like a barcode. Yeah. Right? So that's super weird, right? <laughs> that, that, like, that's not what we expected. Wait a minute. I expected um, a double slit. But so imagine you put an ocean wave through two slits. Okay, mm. so you kind of picture a wave moving, right? You put an ocean wave through the two slits. Um, at those slits, the wave kind of like uh, opens up, kind of like circularly, right? Mm. When it opens up circularly like that, like the waves, the water's moving up and down, and the spots where the both like, the water's moving up at the same time will move it up a lot, right? Mm-hmm. But the spots where it's like one wave is going up, the other's going down, it'll make it not go as high, the water, right? So it's interfering with each other. Some it's canceling out, some's getting bigger. But those waves then, it, when it hit the wall behind it, like there'd be some spots where the wave's really high, some spots where there's no wave at all. So if you could picture light as a wave going through the slits, it's interfering and it's making bright spots and it's making dark spots, right? Mm-hmm. Um, that's what Young saw. So we thought light was we think we thought light was a wave for a really long time then. Because that's pretty definitive evidence that it's a wave, right? Yeah. Okay. So light waves, yeah. Um, but there was... <laughs> and how is it both a wave and a particle? Well, so, like, no, no, we, at this point, we're, like, not to wave. Like, it's, that's what it is. It's a wave. But we had some issues, though. Um, fucking years? later on. So, like, this whole wave thing is working out really well for us. Like, explaining light as a wave, it explains a lot of things. Um, so... Uh, now, the reason why the wave bends around the corner like that is because another thing that waves do, that light also does, is called diffracts. That's the word. It's a, it's, a, it's a weird word. All it means is it bends around the corner. You know how, like, if someone's in the kitchen, like, you can't see them, mm-hmm. but you could call to them and they hear you? Yeah. That's because the sound wave could bend around the corner. It could bend and spread out and you could hear that sound, right? Because waves... Yeah, Dude. but light doesn't bend that much, right? You don't see your friend hmm. in the kitchen. That'd be crazy, though. Like, you could see around corners that much. But light does bend so a little bit. A little bit. The reason why um, discs, like CDs, are so rainbowy when you look at them is because um, the light is hit, like, the, there's it's grooves on it, right? That's how it reads it. And the grooves, the light is actually bending around, like, bending around the groove. And it... But, and the reason why it looks rainbow is because the different colors uh, have, like, different... It, it bend at different angles. Like, red bends at a different angle than blue does, you know? Mm, yeah. It comes out to you. Okay. Um, all right, so light's a wave, right? Mm-hmm. But Einstein, dude. It's your boy. It's your boy Einstein. In fucking um, the 19, 1905... Uh, I'm pretty sure he's doing the work on this stuff. 1905, I want to say. But... Uh, so Einstein, there was some there was some problems. One of the things was the uh, something called the photoelectric effect. So another thing that we realized light did was when we shine light at um, a metal, electrons come off it, right? Um, so that's kind of like how solar panels work, because all electricity is electrons moving. In, like when you shine a light at it, you could make electrons move. If light was a wave, you would think that by cranking up the intensity of the wave more electrons would come out, right? Because mm-hmm. you're getting, you would think it's going more energy, but that's not the case. It's not the, all, uh, no, no, uh, that they would come off faster, right? That if you increase, you would think that if you increase the energy, they would come off the, the plate faster. Mm. But really what happens is just more of them come off. When you increase the frequency, more of them come off the plate. I don't know if I'm explaining this good. But um, the, the issue with the wave pictures, that shouldn't be the case, was the whole thing. So way the just describing light as a wave doesn't descri- uh, doesn't explain the photoelectric effect well. So Einstein was like, nah. Um, if we explain light as a particle, it'll knock the electrons off the plate, kind of like you're playing pool, kind of thing. Um, so just using the description of light as a particle works for that situation, but doesn't work for other situations. You know what I mean? So. Let's take a step back for a second. We talked about a lot of situations, a lot of guys doing a lot of shit, right? So some of them are explaining light as a particle, right? And some of them are explaining light as a wave. And they all have evidence to support their view on it, right? So is light a particle or is it a wave? Don't look. 
<laughs> is light a particle or a wave? Why? Um, if I have an explanation for a particle, and that's a solid explanation, you can't refute it whatsoever. But I also have an explanation for light being a wave, and you can't refute it. It just works. But there's still issues with both. It's either both or neither. Hmm. Wait. Is it hashtag wave particle duality? Yeah, it's wave particle duality. Okay, so I think so. Uh, the way we describe light now is it's both a wave and a particle, depending on how you're looking at it. You know, uh, some people think of it as wave packets, right? Like, like imagine like a string, and then it kind of like packets up and then goes away. Um, but like we can look at it as a wave or a particle, and like, we use whatever view works best for the situation we're talking about, right? Photoelectric effect we talk about it as a particle. Um, fucking, uh, like, the double slit experiment we talk about it as a wave, right? Mm. It's it's both. That's how we understand today. It's both. And I think it's actually a limit. Like, that that is... Wait, hold on. We have to sit on that for a second. It's both a particle and a wave. But mm -hmm. that, does that make any sense? That it's both, that's both things at the same time. It's a wave and a particle. Yeah. That's... I'm fine with that. You're fine with that. I but okay, so like, but let's go back to the ocean example for a second, right? Mm -hmm. We said a stream of particles like moving forward if it was a particle, right? But with a wave, it's moving up and down. It's not moving forward. Like the water, you know? So mm -hmm. it's like doing two different things. Maybe like wave pulses. I guess that's why the wave packet kind of thing is all right. But, but like if we're talking about the ocean, mm -hmm. water is made up of individual bits. Right. Right, but the bits themselves don't move. They don't move forward. You think of the guys in the stadium. Like nothing else. No, they don't move forward, but yeah. something travels through it. Right, right, right. The weight, yeah. But there is nothing. If it wouldn't travel through a vacuum, if that was the case, because there would be no little bits for it to move through mm -hmm. anymore. Therefore, we would never see the sun or the stars or anything because space is a vacuum. Right, that's a big deal too. Hmm. Um, we didn't even talk about that yet, but light moves through a vacuum, meaning there, it can move through things when there's nothing there. Is that weird? So light just does whatever. Light, light does. <laughs> but like, when you, so like, that's, the, the, the whole idea though is we take it for granted every day, right? We turn on the light, we do our shit, and then we turn off the light and we go away, right? But like, what the fuck is happening? You know what I mean? <laughs> like, what is coming? Like, what is happening to make everything bright and real? And that we see it. Um, we It's very hard to describe. Maybe we should pick up next time on the rest of that. Oh, yeah, you're right. Let our minds be blown for a few days. Um, but, um, <laughs> so, I think, like, we, we like to think of things as it's one or the other, right? Like, we like to think of uh, like that, you know, that's only a radiator. Like that's where I had to have to categorize that thing. You know what I mean? But like when we try to think about light, we it's I think it's a limit of our language that it can't be both. You know what I mean? We always want to think of it as one or the other, but um, it's both, dude. It's a wave and a particle. Okay. It's a limit of our minds. Yeah. So what we're gonna do now? So it's both, and we went through the whole thing. We're gonna t look at one picture at a time. Okay. okay. Of of light. So let's focus on the wave picture for a second. Okay. It's waving. It's waving. What is waving? Okay. If it moves through a vacuum, it doesn't move any particles or nothing, right? It's moving through a vacuum. We have to figure out what is actually waving to make light happen. Well, <laughs> is it the light? Um. So. Some I'm, I don't want to get into it, but some scientists like I'm going to go on a tangent for a second to to, to explain what. I know. No, I love it. Um, to explain what light, what is waving, we I need to talk about electricity and magnetism briefly. But okay. that's a whole topic, okay. and we're gonna put we're gonna we're gonna talk about that, but not not now. It's it's a lot of stuff. Go for it. Um, so electricity is um, you you know like well, let's just go go with our idea of electricity. You plug something in, things work. Something's moving through the wire. That electricity moving through the wire, right? Mm -hmm. Um, so when you so this guy, I gotta tell a story. This guy was doing a lecture, right? He's like talking about shit. He's like talking about electricity. He's doing this whole lecture, right? And he's doing like exam like demonstrations. He has like a circuit. He's doing this thing, and he just happened to have a compass nearby to his like what he what he was it happened to be on the bench, right? Yeah, like a, like a compass, like north, south, east, west. He happened to have it on the bench, 
And while he's doing this lecture and he's doing his demonstrations or whatever, he's plugging the electricity, the electricity's flowing, and he looks over and the, the fucking compass needle is bugging out. So, like, think about that for a second. Like, electricity is its own thing, right? And compass is always po pointing north, but it's, like, bugging out the compass, mm -hmm. you know? And, like, I think this is such a crazy thing that he thought this. Like, I feel like, like, weird things happen throughout the day, you know what I mean? You're kind of like, oh, whatever, and you just got to go on with it. And that, that could have, he could have just looked at that and be like, oh, that's a weird thing. And, and then, like, never thought about it ever compass. again. Yeah, right. But, like, he was like, no, nah, that's really fucking weird that that happens. I plug it in, the compass is bugging out. He, f he figured out that electricity affects magnetism. That was a big deal. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And someone else figured out magnetism affects electricity. Did you say who his name is? Uh, Orsted was the compass guy. Hans Christian Orsted? Yes. And there's like his his name, dude. I don't know. I don't know. Like it, it starts with an O, but it's an O, o with a slash. Like yeah. what is that? What do you do with that? Uh, what do you say? People who know. <laughs> Call John. You gotta figure it out because I don't know how to put it ever. Orsted is how I would say. Yeah. yeah. Um, he figured out the compass, Orsted. and Faraday figured out the other way that magnetism affects electricity, right? Michael Faraday. Um, yes. So we talk. So the reason why they affect each other is because they're fundamentally actually the same thing, and that's why you've probably heard the word electromagnetism. Yeah. All right. How's everyone doing? Are we with me? Oh, yeah. We're good. All right. Electromagnetism, right? It's two sides of the same coin. It's electromagnetism. It's like, it, depending on how you're looking at it, is it's the same, it's a similar thing. Okay. So, fuck, all right. Now, do you remember we talked about um, James Clerk Maxwell? First episode. Yeah. Yeah. He's the man, dude. So, like, he is, he is like the unsung hero of physics. James Clark Maxwell. No one, like, I mean, like, physicists really appreciate him, but, like, you've heard Einstein, right? You've heard Isaac Newton. You've heard all them. Dude, James Clerk Mark Maxwell was the fucking man. He did, like, such a huge thing. So, at this time, I'm doing, like, super quick electromagnetism, but, like, at the time, there's a lot of ideas floating around of, like, electricity, magnetism, like, how it affects each other. He came up, he came along, dude, and he wrote down four equations. Four, like, not like they're they're kind of complex with the math they use but they're short like four little sh short equations and he explained everything about electromagnetism <laughs> with those four equations dude four little things and like he totally distilled it and simplified it but here's we're going to go back to light this is the big idea so he found out that um electromagnetism right when, with these equations it satisfies what's called the wave equation and if you satisfy the wave equation it's a wave Okay, so like ocean waves would satisfy the wave equation or whatever. Um, so he figured out that electromagnetism could wave, right? And the way it waves is super wonky because for reasons I'm not going to get into right now because it's kind of complicated. So we remember we talked about they affect each other. So when, um, think of like, so I'm going to talk about the electric field and the magnetic field, right? All the field is is like you can kind of, you know, affect it through space, like gravitational field, you're... You don't have to touch the Earth to feel gravity, right? The gravitational field is whatever. So um, when electricity is affected, right, you're waving electricity, the way magnetism waves is perpendicular to it. So it's like a weird fucking... I'm sorry, I almost like smacked Cadmic face like twice. Sorry. Um, it's sad how long it took me to realize that. that um, do you want to... Yeah, do one? that. Um, all right, so that's how it's waving, right? <laughs> so now this is what this is the, a huge deal. So not only do you write these equations, now he's like doing this shit, he's doing all this work, all this math work, and it's super exciting. And so when you when it satisfies the wave equation, you could calculate the speed of the wave, like how fast the wave will move forward, right? Yeah. And he got a number out, and that number for electromagnetic waves matched experimental values for the speed of light. So James Clerk Maxwell is the first one to say that electromagnetic, that light is electromagnetic radiation. Oh, dang. Okay. Oh, dang. He was the first person to, like, make that <laughs> mental jump. And that, that's, like, a huge deal. Like, that's what's waving is the electromagnetic field. That's why I can move through a vacuum, because it's, it's waving the field, right? Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So, fucking... All right. Now, so... Waves themselves could have a wavelength, right? 
So you can have a waves that, like, the tops of the waves are close together or they're far apart, right? And they could wave faster or slower. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, go up and down. That's frequency. Um, when the more <laughs> waves is, like, the frequency and the further apart it's wavelength. Um, let's talk about wavelength, though. Um, so the wave... Uh, so you can have waves that are the wavelength super big, right? Can you imagine that? Or super small. And the way we classify light, electromagnetic radiation, is like how um, big or how far apart or close together the waves are, right? Okay. So the way we classify electromagnetic radiation, like light, right? Like that movement is just where, like how big the wavelength is. Like, that wavelength could be super big. It could be like, there's no upper limit to how big the wavelength is. So, the, the least energetic waves, light waves, are radio waves. Mm-hmm. Okay? Now, I need to say one thing, though, for a second. You with me? Yeah. Um, is it about radio waves? Most people would say, well, no, it's kind of about, like, electromagnetic radiation. Okay. Um, most people would say light is, like, the visible light, right? That's light, and everything else is electromagnetic radiation, but it's the same, like, it's I don't know. Thing. It's the same, like, they're We're both just waving, a just a different, like yeah, exactly, radiation. right. So I, I like to look at all of it as being light. It's the same thing, right? Depending on, what, like, whatever, it's the same thing, right? So radio waves, the least energetic waves, big wavelength, right? Radio waves. Okay. Where have we heard that word radio before? Uh, <laughs> on the radio? <laughs> right, like those, like, okay, so you're driving, okay, now, think about this for a second now. You're driving to work or whatever, sitting in your car, and there's a magic box, dude. In, like, it's, it's right in your car. It's right there, right? <laughs> And you turn that shit on. It's not. There's no wires or nothing, right? You turn that shit on, and you you pick you hit a button, and music plays out of it. Isn't that fucking like? Well, how is that happening? Waves traveling right. through the air. It's so a sweet antenna. So, you know how you like? Sorry, I keep touching your foot. Um, do you know? Do you know how like radio stations have a number? One hundred two point three. Yeah. Um, fucking ninety eight point fucking yeah. Right. So the what you're dialing into is the frequency of the wave like how much the wave is moving up and down fm radio stands for frequency modulation which is a fancy word for changing right changing the frequency <laughs> um and like the other radio the shittier one that crackles the am am radio that's that the, the way that works is amplitude modulation they're changing the amplitude of the wave that you um tune into whatever radio crackles? Um, i actually don't ways. know i don't know exactly why it's such shitty quality i don't maybe we don't have the infrastructure for it or maybe it's just a shittier way to transmit the wave i'm really not sure but yeah um fucking what the fuck were we talking about oh uh, radio waves okay so um all right we're, let's make the wavelength so the wavelength of radio waves could be as big as fucking like jupiter or bigger you know what i mean because there's no upper limit but like when we stop calling them radio waves when the wavelength is about the size of like a baseball that's when they're not radio, uh, radio waves anymore, when the mm-hmm. wavelength's that small. Um, at that point, they become fucking microwaves. And now, where have I heard the word microwave before? Like dinner? Like dinner, dude. Like that. So there's another magic box. You know where it is? Is it, is is it the microwave? It's in the kitchen, dude. <laughs> that thing, that the microwave. So this is a crazy thing. You put the food in, you hit the button, and your food just like in a minute gets hot isn't that awesome like the friggin jetsons <laughs> it's that's dude yeah seriously if you went back 200 years they would shit <laughs> dude they would shit if you even went back my, when did microwaves come out in the 50s uh I'm just I'm good for now. did they come out that, yeah if you went back even 100 years dude 1917 you can't even imagine a box that is that efficient at cooking food you know so what happens is 17's rough though man <laughs> you might not worry about the microwave that's true uh, so what happens is, is in this box, the microwave, you turn the thing on, and it shoots microwave radiation at your food, which sounds scary, understandably, right? Because, like, radiation is a scary word. But, I'm not scared. But, dude, it's around all the time. Like, light is radiation. Like, we're being irradiated right now by visible light. I could, like, you know what I mean? Like, I could, it's a scary word to say. But, so, it's, the microwave's going to your food, which is less energetic than visible light, by the way. This is more energetic than microwaves are. 
Right? I don't know if energetic's a good thing, then. Because I don't want to go in the microwave. <laughs> well, yeah, you don't want to go in the microwave. But, so what happens right. is, it's like, it's the, it's, the, what happens in the food is it's actually wiggling the water molecules. The wave comes in and it wiggles the water molecules and your food... Speeds them up. Yeah, it speeds them up. And your food... Yeah, it speeds them up. And temperature is just fucking... Um, how much... Caused by yeah. molecules bouncing well, back it, and forth. it's not even friction, dude. It's, it's um, just how much they're moving, you know? It's it, the friction itself isn't making the heat. It's their motion, like the energy of motion. Like the more they're moving, the more temperature. So the wave comes in and it wiggles around the water molecules and it heats it up. Um, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Um, fucking. So you have uh, infrared is the next one. Are we getting smaller now? Yep. Infrared. When you break down the word, it literally just means uh, under red. Infrared. You know? It's the lowest wavelength. Yeah, that's heat, dude. That's like you feel you're feeling electromagnetic radiation. Like when you go over the stove, put your hand hover nice over the stove. <laughs> it's a little hot. Um, that's like you're feeling electromagnetic radiation. Uh, some snakes could see in infrared. Isn't that crazy? Mm -hmm. When you yeah. put on like a thermal camera and it's all colorful and stuff, you're where where you're not like. It's weird to think about, like, you're detecting the infrared, right? Mm -hmm. But you, you're not seeing it, though. You're still seeing visible. You still see red and blue, depending on, like, we're trying to model it as best we can. So it's kind of weird, like, what color would infrared be if we could see it? Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Isn't that weird to think about? Well, like... It wouldn't be one we'd seen. There's... Dude, all right, tangent, but, like, um, like... It's like, imagine, this is kind of sad, but imagine, like, you were born blind. Yeah. Right? And you've never seen the color red, ever. I could never explain the color red to you if you've never seen it, mm -hmm. you know? Like, there's a YouTube channel that's actually pretty cool um, where a guy is was born blind and he just talks about that experience, you know? Because it's a different experience. Like, we don't really... And he has, he's described what it's like for people to try to describe the color red to him. You know, he's the, he'll say like, I mean, they say it's warm or they'll say it's a certain like feeling like anger or something. They say all these things, but I still don't know what you're like. I can't imagine it in my head. I have all these descriptors for it, but I can't really imagine it in your mm -hmm. head. Now, do you think that's a limit of our language that I can't make sounds and red pops into your head without mm -hmm. seeing it? Or is it a limit of like experience, you know, Yeah. meaning like. Like, I could learn as much as I want about the color red. Like, I could sit in, the, in a room, read up on red, what wavelength it is, right? I could read up on all that stuff. You could do it in Braille. I could do it in Braille. I could read every everything written about red. I could read it. Would I learn something if I could suddenly see the color red? Like, if I went outside that room and I saw red for the first time. Yeah. That's a different experience, yeah. right? That's a different, and it's not, like, you can't talk and make that happen yeah. that's just the nature of language right like it's a, a limit word of it we may think of means one thing but it doesn't it right. means something different to every single person yeah based on their experiences with that word right so language like it really makes you think like how you think about things is like you use language for that stuff you know what i mean um but okay so you can't see infrared, but snakes can, was the whole point of that. <laughs> and they see some color, right, but we don't know what it is. Um, all right, so that's infrared, it's heat. All right, so like we finally reached visible light. Mm. And we call it visible light because we could see that shit, right? Yeah. That's really what it is. I've seen it. That's, yeah. So, um, and like we, have the, like, we have detectors in our heads. We have... In, we have uh, visible light detectors in our heads. That's why we experience light. And it it's LPs. interesting to think, like, why we evolved to see such a small um, sliver of the spectrum, you know? Mm -hmm. Why we evolved to just see these colors from these, like, like this wavelength. We just, we evolved to see, I think it's 750 to, like, fucking 300-something nanometers of a super small. 380. 380. <laughs> um and so we have we kind of explanations why that is like why it's such like that like that was the number it wasn't just random you know um uh, eyes like like light detectors evolved in the ocean 
right? Mm-hmm. We're all little, like, fucking globs of whatever. Goopers. <laughs> and it and it, it's like, so there was a mutation that happened, right? So, okay, so this is fucking crazy, dude. Imagine, like, so imagine you're just, like, this, like, little fucking ancient thing, like, living, right? Like, early on. And they reproduce, and it's a mutation. And this mutation is that you now detect electromagnetic radiation. Like, that's the mutation. Like, you could detect that. You know what I mean? And <laughs> everyone else can. Everyone else can. You have... Um, Pretty rad advantage. Yeah, that's a super, super rad. Power. You're an expert. You're, dude, that's, You're an that's expert. it, though. Like, that's a superpower, right? Oh. So, like, that gets passed on. And the better that that detector was, the better you were able to survive. All right. Now, uh, visible light cuts through water really well. So, like, it... And not only that, but it's not blocked by our atmosphere very much. Mm-hmm. Our atmosphere is actually really good at blocking electromagnetic radiation. The only two it really doesn't is visible light and radio waves, actually. It doesn't really block radio waves too much. But, like, if we want to detect any, like, when we get there, like, x-rays or gamma rays, you actually have to put a satellite in space because our atmosphere cuts it out. You can't see it. Mm. So that's, that's why, like, that's the best explanation we have about why we see visible light. You know, and we could see it so, like, crispy. Like, I could see the edge of Greg really well. It's not even just... Yeah, right? You know what I mean? Oh, man, those crispy crispy light waves you can see, bro. Um, Yeah, you know what I mean, though? Because, like, even just the fact that you can see brighter and darker is super useful, right? You can see shadows and stuff, but, like, I could see the colors red all the way through violet, right? By the way, um, when you go through the colors, it gets more and more energetic. And you know what's really, going back to language, that's like the sub-theme, I guess, of this whole thing, episode. Um, we do Roy G. Biv without the I anymore, because mm-hmm. I guess we don't like Indigo. Um, actually, the reason why, I read this actually, I don't know how true it is, but the reason why we had Indigo in there was because Newton actually had like this stern belief that there had to be seven colors. So he tried to pick out seven, you know what I mean? But there are other cultures that explain rainbows with more or less colors like there are some cultures that have like you know how we have like blue indigo and it's kind of similar like they have two words for like the greener side of it like the yellow green and then the greener green you know they have two different words for that so it's kind of like going back to language like we could we interpret the world based on the like what we believe about language you know man all right anyway so um oh i gotta tell you this other thing about visible light hold on (laughs) i gotta tell you this other thing so the sky. What color is it? Blue. Mm. I, <laughs> I would agree. When we look up, we see blue, right? Okay. But our atmosphere scatters um, the higher frequencies, right? The, high, the higher energy visible light. Mm. So that's why it's like blue is higher energy, right? But violet is higher energy than blue. And violet scatters a lot too. The sky... You with me? The sky would look purple if we had more purple receptors in our eyes. We don't have enough purple receptors, or they're not good enough that we don't see the sky as purple. But if we had more of those receptors, the sky would be purple. Because violet is getting scattered down throughout the atmosphere. Mm. Isn't that crazy? That would be rad. You made it <laughs> like a purple. But like, think about it. If the sky was always purple, That'd be... you wouldn't think of it any... Yeah, like, blood, blue would be cool. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that weird though? Like it's sky. crazy that like the color like the color blue is so nice up in the sky. Always there. You know what I mean? <laughs> um <laughs> But like if it but if it was violet, it would like we would we would think it'd be cool if it was blue, right? Yeah. Uh, sorry, I got off topic. Um <laughs> so <laughs> Alright. Violet is the most energetic light that we could see. So the next step, I bet you can't guess what the next one is. Don't you look in. What's the next one? I'll look. You know what it is. What's after violet? What's ultraviolet. Yes, ultraviolet. thank you, Kevin. Ultraviolet. Mega violet. <laughs> <laughs> now super violet. Now the light is getting dangerous a little bit in the ultraviolet. Like oh. we're getting to the higher energy that kind of fucks shit up yeah. now. Rude violet. Yeah, yeah. This is <laughs> this is the shitty violet, dude. Of all the of the violets. Um, so you go outside, you know, put on the sunscreen. What happens? You yeah. get the you get the sunburn. You get the sunburn. It's it's the ultraviolet light that's not getting blocked by the atmosphere. Um, is it like it? Some of it gets blocked, but not all of it gets blocked. It's through, and um, it fucks up your skin. 
And no, but like at this wavelength, when it's this small, it could actually break chemical bonds. You know what I mean? It could fuck up with how molecules work, right? Mm. So it could fuck up with a really important molecule in your skin, which is what do you, th- what do you think it is? The important one. What's the mo- what's, what do you think is the most important, one of the big important molecules in like your cells? Oh, what makes you you? What's that thing? DNA. Yeah, yeah. Say it louder. <laughs> DNA. Yeah, DNA. That's the one. Um, so, Say okay, so listen. Loud. The ultraviolet light comes in and fucks with the DNA, right? And then it tries to make a new cell. It's trying to copy this, this shitty DNA, right? And then you get cancer. And you get cancer. Because it fucks up your DNA, and now your cells are dividing like crazy, man. Like, they're just don't stop, you know? <laughs> we'll punch you in Thinking space. of all the bad <laughs> something. It's just scary. Like, this is scary stuff, you know? Yeah. Like, the, your cells, you, it's, it's weird to think about. Like, your oh. cells, when you, like, cancerous cells. I'm going off on another tangent. I'm sorry. But cancerous cells fucking are like the most alive cells. They're too alive is the issue. They're, they're so dividing too much and they're growing like too much. They're doing that shit too much. It's not good. Because like we need a system in place that we have control about the number of cells and how we're, they're growing. You know what I mean? For like the greater good of our body. But these cells are like, no, nah, fuck that shit. I'm gonna, I'm gonna grow and I'm gonna divide. Like no one's telling me what's, they're like the anarchists of our body. They're, li- they're trying to live too much. And I, that's an issue, right? Yeah. You know what I mean? I would agree. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's not called fun, sir. It's <laughs> right. called cancer. Um, all right. Anyway, so fucking what were we talking about? Ultraviolet radiation? It's the dangerous radiation. Yeah, so next is x-rays after ultraviolet. And um, x-rays are the ones, you know, you go to the doctor and they see the, the those... Uh, fucking x-rays bones. yeah the bones mm-hmm. in your body and we you, you know you go to the dentist and they like fucking that stupid thing over yeah, here and you put they put you on the lead vest right they put the lead vest on All the you. bits but my brain <laughs> <laughs> so x-rays are dangerous they're high energy right mm. um but they're administered in such low doses that it's okay but just like like there's not there's a very low probability that's going to do any damage you yeah, know just taking a quick picture right just but just to be safe, they protect your um, important innards with the lead vest. And then they go behind a big old <laughs> yeah, wall <laughs> to leave you in there like, all right, you'll be fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> um, but like, dude, imagine the people that discovered this shit, like x-rays and gamma rays. Like, you know what I mean? Like the higher energy radiation. Like they didn't know this shit was so bad for you. And it fucked them up, like, bad. You know what I mean? Like, they, like, once some of the first people studying high-energy radiation, like, they died super early. Because they didn't know that it was, like... Because you don't know that shit until someone dies. And they're like, oh, oh dang. that's not good. Write it down. <laughs> Timmy died. <laughs> that's painful. a big problem, right? All right, the, mo- the highest energy light is gamma rays. Okay? And gamma rays have no lower limit, right? So remember, radio waves have no upper limit. And gamma rays have no lower limit, so you get super, super small. And so you make a hole. Um, and even low doses of gamma rays are super not good for us. Like, super bad. <laughs> Don't take a super picture of you with no your gamma, gamma rays. gun. That's one of the issues of trying to go to Mars. Uh-huh. Um, like, putting humans in a spaceship for that long out from the atmosphere are really dude our our earth is so fucking nice to us you know <laughs> it like it protects us from all this shitty radiation from space and it keeps like like us at a, such a good temperature you know what i mean um but like as soon as you leave that and you're in space and the radiation just fucking hitting you like we have to figure out a way to handle that right mm-hmm. you can't have all those gamma rays on you it's not no, good i don't like it um all right so gamma rays are the that's that's the wave picture right yeah but what's the problem, John? <laughs> All right, so like we were talking about the problems with the wave picture and the particle picture or whatever. Um, some of the problems with the wave picture, we talked about the photoelectric effect, right? Mm-hmm. But there's another problem. And dude has like the most intense name of like any situation in science. It's, <laughs> it's, so, it's called the ultraviolet catastrophe. <laughs> it's like the beginning of like a Scooby-Doo episode, dude. Um, the oh. ultraviolet catastrophe. So, um, we said before that hot things, they radiate, right? They shoot electromagnetic radiation out. Okay. Now, if, if 
light was just the wave. This was before we figured out that it was both, right? Before like um, we did all that work, we were just we still thought it was a wave. If light was just a wave, we would predict that at um, lower, at higher frequencies, lower wavelengths, that more and more energy would be transferred, right? From like what's called like from a hot thing. We, we, they use like they, the way they talk about hot things. They use this term called black body, which isn't real. It's not a real. Th this is going to get kind of complicated. You with me? Um, all aboard. Okay. <laughs> Um, a black body is a theoretical thing. It's not a real thing, but it's the perfect emitter of radiation and the perfect absorber of it, right? So remember how we said that um, the construction paper or whatever like absorbed all the light? Uh, so this black body is perfect absorber and emitter of radiation. But like, and we use that perfect theoretical idea to try to best explain what's actually happening. You know what I mean? One of the jokes about um, fucking physics... <laughs> it's like um it's it's actually kind of lame but like <laughs> but like um phys like some people joke about physics that like we look at like things perfectly like spherically and in a vacuum like there's like it's not real how we look at it you know what i mean mm. um <laughs> this, all right, I have to tell you a joke. I have to tell you. I, I wasn't. I, was, I almost stopped myself from telling it, but I'm going to tell it. You, you with me? I'm. I'm it's all not gonna, bored. It's not going to make sense, and it's not going to be funny. You ready? <laughs> Those are the best kind of jokes. That's, that's on par, John. <laughs> all right. So some chickens. Okay, you have some chickens, and they're sick. These chickens are sick. They're shit. They're not doing. They're not. <laughs> Is that the joke? No. Those sick chickens. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm not done yet. Um, the chickens are shitty, right? <laughs> so you call up um, a bunch of people to try to figure out what's going on with your chickens, right? You call like the vet, you call a chemist, you know what I mean? You call, I don't know, and you call a physicist. This is someone else you call. I don't know why. But anyway, they all come to the lecture. The three kings. <laughs> Wait, they come and look at your shitty chickens, right? You're trying to figure out what's wrong with them. And... Um, the fuck the vet couldn't figure it out. The biologist couldn't figure it out. They're like, no, we don't know what's happening. And the physicist is like, no, I got it. It works. First, you have to assume <laughs> the chickens are, um, <laughs> are are perfect spheres in a vacuum, and then you could figure out that they're alright. <laughs> um, like you know, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> a little bit skips the end of the like one of those little time skip buttons. But the joke is that that the, the physicists are disconnected from reality by trying to figure that out. You know what I mean? Like they they're going too like theoretical and idealistic. But like I think the argument is that if you figure out things at its like foundational level, at like that, and then like then put more complicated stuff on it, like you know what's going on fundamentally. You know what I mean? So that's my argument against the chicken joke, the shitty chicken physics joke. But against, like, for uh, it? What, what were we talking about? <laughs> what were we talking about before the chickens? Uh, the black bodies. Okay, right, black bodies. These these perfect things. Um, all right, it's called the <laughs> ultraviolet catastrophe because <laughs> classical physics wave. Listen to me. Wave physics um, predicted that. Um, we would produce an infinite amount of energy when you make the frequency small enough. But that's not real. Like, it, conservation of energy says you can't do that. You can't make an infinite amount of energy. And what we actually observe is almost completely the, pretty much completely the opposite. Mm -hmm. when, you, when the frequency gets too low, you actually don't detect too much of it. You know what I mean? So, like, there's two different shapes, and it's completely opposite. That's why it's a catastrophe. Like, one graph is going up, dude, and the actual, like, so the one, like, the theoretical graph is going up, but what we actually observe is, like, fucking going straight down to the ground. Oh, you know? It's a catastrophe. It's a catastrophe. And this is the wave picture. The catastrophe is, like, this wave picture is not only just a little off, but it's, it couldn't be more wrong from what we see. That's, that's a huge problem, you know? All right, so this guy, dude, this fucking guy, Max, his name is Max Planck. Max Planck. Um, um, he did a lot of important stuff, Max Planck. He was a big deal for quantum physics. We're going to hold off on him, but he's so cool. Um, he has a constant, dude. Guess what the name of his constant is? Constant. It's Planck's constant, dude. It's Planck's constant. All right, anyway, so fucking um, Max Planck, to figure this out, he was like, yo, what if 
light wasn't actually a wave, but it was a particle. And like these, this energy was transferred in packets. You know what I mean? And like, we talked about that already. I'm sorry. We talked about that already, but like he figured out this catastrophe with the um, particle picture, right? So wave particle duality. Good? Yeah. That whole thing. Okay. So, um, fucking, so light. Let's go back to light for a second. We, t- we told a lot of stories, right? There was a whole lot of fucking tangents. But, so light is both a stream of particles and a wave. That's how we describe it. You know what I mean? It does all this crazy shit. Um, and it's also the speed, it's, it's, it has a, f- it, it, the, whatever is moving is also moving at a finite speed, right? We think of light as like instantaneous, like we turn on the light and the room is instantly bright. You know what I mean? But it actually, it takes time to brighten up the room, you know? So that's like, you have to think about that. Everything you see, it took some time to go from where, like, where, like, the light that bounced off that thing to get to your eye. It took some time to get there. So, like, we're close, so things are pretty instantaneous, but you could, ca- like, you could calculate, it would be super fucking small, but you can, it's, it's, you can, ca- it's, you can calculate how much time it took to get for a photon or a light particle to get from you to, <laughs> to me. And so, like, you're looking back, and I'm looking, what, I, what hits my eyes and registers in my brain is back in time a little bit, right? Like, everything you do, take like, it took some time to get to my eye and get registered to my brain, right? It's super small here, but when you look out in the space, in the outer space, <laughs> you look out there, um, light takes time to get to you. You know what I mean? The sun is eight light minutes away from us. Mm. So, you know, you've heard light years, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, a light year is a measure of distance. It's how far light travels in a year, which is a fucking, it's a lot. So light is finite, but it's super fast though, too. And it's, all right, how fast it is, is 300 million meters per second. That's how fast it moves. So in, in one second, a meter is about a yard. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So in one second, light travels 300 million times 10 to the eight, right? Wait, hold on. 300, yes, 300 million yards per second. That's a fucking lot of football fields, dude. That in one second. It's fast, but it's finite, right? Um, space is big, right? Yeah. So light years, imagine light travels that fast in a second, so you calculate how far it travels in a year. Those are light years, right? That's fucking, that's a long thing, light years. But the sun, the light minutes are also long, too. You're talking in terms of 300 million a second. So the sun is eight light minutes away. The light that comes off the sun, if you follow, like, the light that comes off the sun takes eight minutes to go from the sun to your eyes. Right? That's, like, it's a direct, isn't that, like, when you look at the sun, the shit, like, the photons that are coming off the sun is beeline, like, directly, like, the, like that's the same thing that comes to your eye. The sun's producing a thing that's coming to your eye and you're detecting the sun. But you're not seeing the sun as it is now. You're seeing as it was eight minutes ago. So if the sun died, it would take us eight minutes yeah. to find out. Yeah, dude. So, like, the sun, imagine the sun burned out. I mean, it's not, it's not gonna. I mean, we're pretty sure it's not gonna. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> pretty awesome. sure it's not gonna. But imagine it burned out. You would still look in the sky and you'd still see the sun. It would take eight minutes for it to not look like the sun anymore. And it would burn out. Is that fucking crazy? So, um, and dude, the closest galaxy to us is light years away. Light years away, dude. Um, That's how far light travels in a year. Light's fucking fast. All right. But when you look out in the sky, though, and all the stars up in the sky, those are fucking like hundreds, thousands of light years away. So, like, what you're seeing isn't how it is right now. You're seeing as it was that long ago. You're looking back in time. The further you look out in space, you're looking, like, what you're detecting in your eyes is back in time. Because light is a finite speed. You know what I mean? Yeah. There are things that are, like, 10.6 billion light years away. Yes. That we've seen. That we've detected. That fucking, that's a fucking far time. time. That was a long time. Um, All right. So... What is light, dude? 
Wait. <laughs> but <laughs> we talked about a lot, dude. Is it electromagnetic radiation? Yeah, that's the wave picture of it, right? Oh, the wait, actual no, is that one wrong now? No, well, no, I mean, it, it is. Is it it's the also, maximum plank? It's it's also... No, it's a dude. Oh. Right? Um, <laughs> it's, all, it's, it's a wave, it's a particle, but, like, you, like... There's so many, I don't know, it's like, I feel like there's so many good stories about just us trying to figure out what the sh fuck's going on with that. And when you look so closely, it gets really, it gets really weird. And, like, alright, so like, you're outside, and it's nighttime, and you look up in the sky, and waves and particles, or both, or whatever, are ancient, and it's so fucking far in the past, because we know that light is finite. We figured it out, we experimentally found out that light moves at a finite speed. So we, we like, we know all, like, this is our best explanation for how the world works. And it's so, it gets so weird. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, we're explaining how shit works, and it's super, like, weird. It's not, it's, like, more than we could have ever imagined. It's, like, the weirdest thing you could imagine, like, the universe is weirder. You know? Um, and it, it's kind of a cool thing. And all, like, it, it all started with just trying to figure out what is going on when, like, when things make light, why we see things, you know? Yeah. Yeah. How you feel with light? You alright with it? It's pretty bright. It's pretty bright. Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's not. Yeah. It's true. 